You've hit a new low, Joker. Only you would ruin three lives for a silly piece of tin. You're dumber than you look, Bats. It's not the trophy that matters, it's the title! And just like that, I would like to welcome you to another adventure of Half Glass Gaming! Boom! Rockets! I love you all. Except for you. I like that he pointed at no one in particular. <laughs> no, I pointed at someone very particular. And they know who they are. Like, I mean, he actually pointed here in the studio where nobody can see him. I was pointing actually through like a little black hole in space and time. My finger then sort of protruded to this person. He's like in Portal. like mm -hmm. Yeah, all of a sudden this guy had a finger in his face and he was like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Must be recording another episode. And in fact, we are. I am Julian. I will moderate and model and aid. I'm joined, of course, by Josh. Just Josh. The Reverend. I am the Reverend. That's who I am. And Mandy. Hi. Yeah. The heart and soul of this podcast. Mm hmm. Much like a booth at Denny's. <laughs> <laughs> You know, we're just one small neighborhood. <laughs> yeah, we just uh, we just got back from Denny's. We had a, a half class gaming outing. Mm -hmm. We had at Denny's breakfast this morning. Mm -hmm. they, they had idiotic little sayings on their coffee mugs, and and one of them was, you know, at a diner, the coffee mug is never half full, and that that's that's demonstrably untrue. There was there was many parts of that breakfast where my coffee mug was half full or less. Mm -hmm. But I mean, did it say half full or did it say half empty? I think it probably said half empty if it said half empty like i at least get what they're going for that's but if true. it said half full like mm -hmm. it makes no sense that, yeah. that's true and they're just skimping on the coffee i mean it has to be empty at some point yeah, right and then and then the other one which a diner is like a small neighborhood or some bullshit. there's like a boo a diner booth is a small neighborhood or yeah something, yeah something yes. like that i used to live over by a denny's and I had roommates and we used to throw parties all the time. And so we were drinking a lot. And Denny's was a kind of a fantastic place to go on like a Sunday morning mm -hmm. after well, a that's, party. That's what Denny's is for. You you go there when you're really drunk, really fucked up or something. I used to work at Denny's. I did used to work at Denny's long, long ago. How'd that go? Oh, I hated it. Yeah. I mean, it, it's, it's miserable mm -hmm. being a waitress. And it's even more miserable being a waitress at Denny's. Yeah. I, I can only imagine. I've I've worked as a server at like a Pizza Hut, mm -hmm. and that sucked. And I've worked fast food most of my life, and that sucks. Mm -hmm. I, I helped a guy with a proposal once at Denny's. He had me write, will you marry me on the check and give the check to his girlfriend. Mm -hmm. she, I mean, she seemed really happy. Until she paid for the check. <laughs> it was just, I felt really awkward about it. I'm like, I'm not, I'm not sure. I feel comfortable writing out somebody's marriage proposal for them. Yeah, because what if she okay. thought you were asking her to I know, mm -hmm. I know. I mean, I didn't want to marry her. Yeah, I didn't even not. know her. Right. It was very awkward, but I mean, she seemed happy and I didn't have to marry her. So it That's all good. Out. Like, you didn't even know if she liked chickens or not. I yeah, know. I was, I was just going to say that. What if yeah. she's? What if she had a deep fondness of I chickens? I mean, I think she may have eaten chicken. So, so, so what if she... she it right. Was, that I already been, knew we were yeah, Already. Animals. Yeah. That wasn't going to happen. It's not true. Because... <laughs> I date Josh, who eats chickens. <laughs> oh, I love chicken. Well, oh, but Denny's isn't a bad place to work if you like games, though. Yeah, Denny's, uh, at one point, I don't think they have it anymore. They used to have an app. It was all, you know, Atari 2600 games. Mm -hmm. But they were redone as, like, Denny's food items. And so they had asteroids but it was called hashteroids and you're like <laughs> shooting ketchup at little blobs of hash browns mm -hmm. and they had it centipede but it was sent a pup because they have like the pup pancakes at one point you had the second highest score in one of those apps didn't you i was in i was definitely in the top 10 in the world in one of those games at one point <laughs> yeah uh, th that that's something to put on the resume that is <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> absolutely what a bizarre idea to take old Atari games and infuse them with Denny's products. That's that's pretty common though. I like a lot of fast food and, and cheap food places have done that as marketing. I mean, well, you remember had... MC Kids? The MC Kids was this Nintendo game that you know it was it was a platformer, and you went in and uh, you know the little icons that you would collect weren't coins; they were the McDonald's arches. Sure. No, I mean obviously, yeah, Sneak King, all that shit. But I mean to actually take pre-existing old Atari games 
and modify them to have Denny's products. I mean, that just seems... Yeah, it was probably cheap. Mm-hmm. Blasphemous. <laughs> it was that, not, too. Not the weirdest thing that Josh has played, for sure. Yeah, I recently, in a sale, got a game called Men's Room Mayhem. Oh, I play it, I play it almost it? almost exclusively when I'm in the bathroom. That was it. We've all been in Mayhem <laughs> in the Men's Room. Okay. But it's on the Vita, and uh, I think I got it for like 80 cents. <laughs> the whole thing is there's a Men's Room, and and uh, dudes come in, and you have to like guide them to the toilet. Uh-huh. If they, have, they say over their heads if they have to pee or poop. And so you like <laughs> guide you them. Guide them to the correct toilet and then guide them to the sink to wash uh-huh. their hands and then to the exit. But if two guys run into each other, they get in a fight. <laughs> and then there's like blood yeah, <laughs> everywhere. Yeah. And like between rounds, you have to like clean up all the blood. Oh, <laughs> I mean, ja- Josh is pretty into this. I saw it as a joke and I'm like, hey, hey, Josh, there's a game with poop in it for 80 cents. And he's like, oh, I'm buying it. Yeah. And it, no, I mean, Sold. and I bought it too. But Josh, I, I played it like once and Josh plays it obsessively. Whenever I'm on my Vita, Josh will disappear and all of a sudden I'll see. It's like Josh's name is online and I'll be like, like, oh, he must be in the bathroom right now. <laughs> and I'm gonna, he must be in the bathroom. <laughs> I'm trying it. Like I, it doesn't have a platinum trophy, but I'm I'm gonna try to get all of the trophies in that game. Hmm. Well, you really like trophies. You've you've been pretty consistent about that. I love trophies. Oh my gosh! No, I love trophies too. Yeah, they're okay. I I never really got into them until more recently. I've I've definitely sort of paid more attention to them. I used to be an Xbox guy, so they were achievements. Yeah, I never got into achievements, mm-hmm. but I, no, I, I just got a new platinum trophy yesterday. Oh, there you go. I don't have any. Like Steam has achievements, mm-hmm. but uh, I don't know. I've I've very rarely just gone out of my way to get trophies or achievements. Like it's if it happens, it's like oh, that's kind of neat. I can do that, mm-hmm. but I, like. I don't know that I've ever gone for a game going, okay, there are achievements and I'm going to try to get these things. I 100% at Long Live the Queen, which is very, that's, very hard yes, to do. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah, it is a very difficult game. Mm-hmm. See, I've never cared about Steam achievements. I cared very little about Xbox achievements, mm-hmm. but trophies, like PlayStation trophies, for some reason, like that's what does it for me. I don't know if it's the ding sound that it makes or <laughs> the fact that, that the PlayStation handles trophies very well and it's very easy to like compare your trophies with your yeah. friends and and everything's very organized like on the Xbox 360 it was a complete mess yeah for me though i was like naive enough to think that the uh, achievement points and the gamer score somehow was a form of currency that I could use. No, I thought that too. And like, because they had you buy points to yeah, shop at the exactly, store at that right. point. And it looks so similar. And yeah. so it, it made some sort of sense. I was like, man, I got 33,000 points. I'm going to go get something completely worthless. Yeah. But, you know, <laughs> I earned you, it. You, you couldn't even get something worthless with yeah. that much. <laughs> they themselves were worthless. One of the things I always just liked about gamer score is that they'd have achievements with zero points. And it really yeah. bothered me. And usually it was like, kill yourself five times and then you get zero points mm-hmm. for it but i mean i don't know it irritated me so yeah. much if you're going to have points don't have something that like hey you did a thing and then and not nothing. give points for yeah. it yeah you can just like just I, easily... I, I did the thing yeah give me my points <laughs> and so i think that's part of why i like psn trophies and even steam achievements mm-hmm. uh more than the gamer score is mm-hmm. just that at least nothing is going out of its way to point out it's meaningless i yeah. mean i know it's meaningless but it's fun and i don't want to be reminded that it's meaningless well yeah. also and there are some uh games that with in on the xbox uh 360 uh with the whole gamer score that you can't get those points anymore like you know, they were an online game, well, oh, or they were for, on- they're for Sony games too. And also, I mean, there are ones that are impossible for by design on Steam. A lot mm-hmm. of them, sure. So. But like, I don't know. For some reason, when there's a score with points, that bugs me more than just like here's this achievement that now you can't get. Well, before we get too far into this, and perhaps we're even at that point, um, I'd like to call a break. Of course, you know, shout outs to uh, uh, Wheelie and Two X Double A. You can find us on uh, RetroVolve.com, read some articles. You can, of course, always find us on our uh, mothership, HalfGlassGaming.com, where you'll find a detailed list of all the games that we discuss in case you want to delve deeper into the abyss. Of course, we're also on iTunes, Stitcher. So when we come back from the break, if you haven't already guessed, we're going to be talking about trophies and achievements.
Welcome back from the break. People are hugging, and you just got a trophy for listening to the break. I, I just got a trophy for hugging. She just got a hugging trophy. <laughs> I'm a boy in his blab. I got the hugging trophy. There were trophies on that? When did that happen? The, on the Wii. The, 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 there's a Wii version, and they just they recently released uh, a remastered version of the Wii mm-hmm. version. And you get on the a Wii trophy. U? No, on the PS4. Did you see my face? <laughs> <laughs> it's on PS4 and Vita. It's cross by. Awesome. And uh, you get a trophy for hugging the blob five times. Cool. I, I didn't even know there was any kind of new version of Boy and His Blob. Yeah, there you go. It's did... made by Way Forward, who I did need... the DuckTales remastered. There you I, go. I absolutely need to play that now, because like, A Boy and His Blob was one of those not very good games that oh, I, I loved. It, I Oh, yeah. I loved it to death. Yeah, I love it. I just, um, it I... might be on Steam, too. You killed it? I just don't follow yes, this I, stuff. I, I, you wait. loved it to death? So yes, you know so it's dead it? now. Yeah. I'm, I'm the person who did that. Son of a gun. Well, but now, speaking of remake of an old game that has achievements and trophies added into it. I struggle to think of any games in the quote-unquote retro era. Retro? <laughs> retro era. Achievements, trophies. I mean, was this a thing of the past? What are we talking about here? Uh, Activision had a patch program, which it introduced in 1982, where you could take a photo of your screen if you hit a certain achievement. And like they, a Polaroid? And not even a Polaroid, necessarily. I mean, you could go and get the film developed, I guess. But you, <laughs> if you mailed them a photo of your screen after yeah. hitting a certain achievement, they would mail you a physical badge. A lot of them came with a letter written by one of the characters in the game congratulating you on your success, and you would get an action like badge that you could stitch onto your clothing weird and and i know that like nintendo power at the very least and probably other uh gaming magazines uh would have a similar thing where you know send us a picture of you doing this thing in some video game and we'll give you a certificate or whatever a uh, a friend of mine actually kept trying to get a reward for beating metroid uh under a certain amount of time but apparently his time was so low that nintendo kept going Going, that's bullshit you doctored that we're not giving you anything oh wow <laughs> so he, he never got his reward yeah nintendo nintendo no yeah, yeah right nintendo but other don't. other than that i feel like um otherwise it was just arcades you mm-hmm. uh if you got the high score you could put you know your initials or what most people did put ass on on the thing ass yeah. uh and so like that that was kind of you know, hey, look, there's my initials. I did great. But it was a really localized thing. It mm-hmm. wasn't, you know, everyone in the country could see that. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it wasn't like a built-in reward. No, there are games with built-in achievements. Mm-hmm. Uh, like there was Emotion, which was released in 1990, which had an achievement system. And it was just built into the game. Mm-hmm. There wasn't, you know, a console-wide infrastructure. How did I, that work? There was like a list of things you could do. And if you achieved it, you'd get the little star next to it showing you achieved it. Mm. I mean, and Blizzard games mm-hmm. also tended to have a, achievement systems. Uh, some of the Pokemon games mm. had sort of achievement systems, but you kind of had to look for it. So for like emotion, which you mentioned, how did you know, you know, what would garner you an achievement or they they had a, a list in game just like you would check a trophy or achievement list now and none of them were hidden obviously in yeah. this case and uh-huh. so you'd see a list of goals you could try to hit and then you would get recognition when you mm-hmm. hit that goal. Okay, because it seems like most people on the achievement hunt, it's like they can't not get them almost like an addiction i guess the motivation is there but i mean so games back then i mean it's set up the same way you look at a list and yeah and some of them are pretty hidden like a lot of blizzard games had uh, achievement systems and sometimes you kind of had to even dig around Mm -hmm. in the menu system but i like they do stuff like keep track of how many times you did this Mm -hmm. and just having that i love that probably even more than any kind of achievement system just seeing i did this this many times Mm -hmm. uh like warcraft 2 would do that it was super fun that is pretty cool when we ask about achievements are we talking about like you know do this thing get a little icon or are we just talking about you know our stats and like how are we quantifying that the way I, I i look at it is based on like the current model where you achieve a certain thing in the game and it gives you like a, a reward or a trophy yeah, i or mean and it, it was it isn't a reward in the case of this game it's more like a star or a check mark so mm-hmm. like kill 100 goblins and then when you killed 100 goblins you have a little check mark showing that you killed 100 goblins mm-hmm. that's how i've always played games really whether the game built it in or not. Not necessarily killing 100 goblins, but making a list of stuff that I wanted to do before I w- would feel done with the game and I would sit down with my video game magazines when they 
they had uh, sections about side quests or collectibles and like say, okay, there are this many of this thing. Like mm-hmm. in the Kirby games, you could collect stars. And so I would take notes, keeping track of how many stars I gave. I tried for years to get all the stars in Kirby's Dream Land 2. I never did. And I didn't realize it's actually the hardest Kirby game in the entire series to 100% hmm. to this day. Well, I, some of the Mario games did that as well. Yeah. And so for me, it's sort of a natural evolution of how I've played games Mm -hmm. is setting a list of goals for myself and hitting them. And now they give me suggestions, which maybe makes me play more creatively. Mm -hmm. So it starts as badges, magazines, recognition from pictures, moves on to sort of games that say, hey, look, you know, you did get a star for killing 100 zombies or whatever. Tony Hawk Pro Skater 2 actually had an in-game like in menu list of all of the uh, the gaps in mm-hmm. the game, like yeah. if you if you wanted to get really deep into Tony Hawk Two, like like I did, mm-hmm. uh, you could go through the menu and and try to find all of the gaps. Yeah, and some right of them, yeah, yeah, some of them were so hard. Like I had a notebook and I yeah. had like them written down and like crossed off mm-hmm. when I when I finally got them. And yeah, I would say something like big mouth gap, and you're thinking, okay, now where the hell on the map could this be? You know, right. Obviously, jump the shark. Well, there's a shark, you know, whatever over there. I, I get that one, but some of yeah, some of them were really obvious. But some of them, like you had to unlock the secret rooms and like mm-hmm. really mess around to, to find. And I really liked that. Mm-hmm. I replayed Tony Hawk Two on PC, mm-hmm. and you know, this was like 2001 or 2002, probably. And so I, I had like early, I had like dial up internet, I think. But I, I never, I don't think I ever went and like found help on those things. Mm-hmm. I just wouldn't do it. I yeah, would just right. try to do it on my own. And I never finished, but. Well, it's interesting to hear you say that you would make a list of things that you wanted to do. I have never come across really that. Um, anybody who's done that before. Yeah, they have a note section even in old game manuals. I, I always yeah, thought always those did. are just like, well, for notes, not necessarily like, I guess I guess they're for everything. So Yeah, I mean, no, I'd, I'd fill entire notebooks, mm-hmm. absolutely. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I wouldn't use it, but yeah, they had the notes section. I don't know, like that, that, to me, that kind of stuff is nice if you have a game that you already really like playing and you're like, well, I feel like I've done all the basic stuff I can do with it. Oh, well... Yeah, okay, I'll see if I can find this gap or mm-hmm. whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I don't think I've ever gone, oh, well, here's a game I'm not entirely interested in. I'm just kind of, oh, well, they have achievements. Well, then I should play it. Like, I've, I've never felt that way mm-hmm. about them. Mm-hmm. Well, like, when I was younger, I would typically just play, it, like, one game at a time. Yeah. And I would do as much in that game as I possibly could. I and mean, so, like, my options were limited. Like, when well, I right. sat down to play a game, it was like, well, I only have... This one, the one game. game, right? Or you know, um, you, you rented a game for the weekend, and like that—that that was your game. You had right. it for the weekend. Mm-hmm. But I mean, now, like every time I sit down to play games, it's like this existential crisis almost, where it's like, what do I play? Because I'm always buying games in uh, PSN sales mm-hmm. or the PlayStation Plus games. Like I have. I have probably hundreds of games on my PlayStation consoles that I haven't even played. Mm-hmm. You know, most people have that problem with Steam, where it's like, oh, this game was eighty cents in the Steam yeah. sale. I'll buy it. Yeah. Um, but like when I sit down to play a game and I'm like, I don't really know what I want to play, but I want to play a game, whether or not it has trophies has been a determining factor. Really? See, that's an easy thing for me to decide. I go, huh, what do I want to play? All right, Skyrim. (laughs) That's why I didn't get into Lego City Underground and the Mm -hmm. Wii U. Mm -hmm. Like if that were on PS3 and had trophies, I would have played the shit out of that yeah. game because it's so much fun. It's like, it's basically Grand Theft Auto as like a Lego game. Right. But uh, it didn't have trophies, and I kind of got bored with it. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, is it basically like the Xbox 360? Is that when this sort of current craze kind of crops up? Well, it actually sort of began with MSN Games, which was an online gaming website introduced in 1996. Mm-hmm. And they had a lot of really simple browser games that you could play. And it had a badge system and a point system. And Microsoft bought MSN Games mm-hmm. and used that system as an infrastructure mm-hmm. for their own system on yeah, the Xbox 360. It seems like with the 360 and the achievement system, uh, it just sort of caught fire. and kind of became this thing. I mean, they mandated that you had to have what a thousand gamer points in any game that you made or something well not on xbox live arcade mm-hmm. but for full 
uh, retail releases. Yes. Right. So you run into things like, hey, 100 points, you, you turned on the game. <laughs> you know, it's like... I feel like that was at least in part Microsoft going, well, if you're going to make a full release console game, you've got to make sure it has at least X amount of gameplay. Mm -hmm. So here's our cheap and easy yeah. way to ensure, like, you have to have a thousand points because then we know at least they're going to find a thousand points worth of gameplay in it. No, because you're a, a trophy whore. Correct uh, me if I'm wrong. I wouldn't use the word whore. Whore? <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're a trophy woman of the night. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> right? Do you get any pleasure out of those trophies that you, you achieve simply by completing a level or do you prefer something that offers a little bit more of a challenge or even a mystery i mean there are some that they don't even tell you how to get them or what they're called oh i i hate hidden trophies unless they're basic plot based it just happen if it's like the trophies that you get just for beating like beating this level mm -hmm. then i'm fine with it because mm -hmm. you're gonna get them anyway but if, yeah. they're, if they're not like i hate the hidden trophy thing but doesn't it almost seem like what's the point if i'm getting this just for completing this level which i would have done probably anyways i mean there i mean there have been t times like uh recently with with uh black ops 3 mm -hmm. You know, I was tired of it. I didn't really like the single player campaign that much. And I was like, well, I only have three more levels and they mm -hmm. each have a trophy. So I guess I will finish it. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I think I probably have finished a lot of single player games that I wouldn't have otherwise mm -hmm. just because I knew there was a trophy at the end. Mm. I like stuff like that because it allows you to track progress of your friends hmm. if you are playing a game and your friends playing it and you want to see how far they made it before you talk about it with them you can go and compare trophies and then when you see the story based trophies you can see oh at least they've gotten that far and mm -hmm. then know right from the get-go i was tracking julian through all of the witcher 3. <laughs> yeah <laughs> no, when josh and i first started dating he went on my psn account and went through all of my trophies in front of me and was yeah. like commenting on them he's like oh you, you got a lot of trophies in this game what you put you play god of war and like, <laughs> I felt so uncomfortable. And yeah. he went through like everything, all yeah. these trophies, oh, yeah. commenting on all of them. You know, I had to 67 see 67% completion at Skylanders. <laughs> I did. I did see how compatible we were. Yeah. <laughs> Although I will say, I guess the story-based trophies are a good incentive if you care about them to to not get too sidetracked when playing like a larger game like a Fallout or something. You know, it's sort of like, oh, you're looking at the trophy list. Oh, I can get this for this. Maybe I'll dive back into the main story. kind of helps you weave back in a little bit. I will say that uh, the achievements for Skyrim on uh, Steam uh, did occasionally have me go, oh, there's still this apparently important enough quest line to have an achievement for that I've never even triggered. Mm -hmm. What the hell is that? And so, like, so, yeah, it, it's done a little bit of that for me, mm -hmm. at least in the one game. Well, and it's gotten so popular now that Microsoft releases achievement lists for games before the game comes out, which I think is, I, I don't get, I mean, you know, whatever, I'll, if I'm into the game, if I owned a Microsoft console, I would just see them when I get it and, you know, I don't need to know ahead of time. Well, there's whole, there's whole websites now dedicated to, like, just listing out trophy and achievement lists yeah. and, then like, having a little description or a little forum post or whatever. Um, explaining like how to get them. Mm -hmm. I no, say... I mean I use trophy roadmaps all the time. If I decide I really want to platinum a game, that's how I approach it. It's yeah, there's like... tips that can save you a lot of time. Mm -hmm. Like, hey, you can get all of these in the same playthrough. Mm -hmm. uh, they'll build a whole strategy for you and like, okay, your first time through the game, get this trophy, this trophy, and this trophy. Then your next time, and like they map it out for you, so you have a strategy. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Which... I, I tend to platinum JRPGs, which mm -hmm. is effort. Yeah, and so. <laughs> It really helps to have the job. strategy yeah. for making sure I do all this and like focus on this and you could ignore this because it'll be easier to get later on. Mm -hmm. And a lot of those guides go out of their way to not spoil you on anything that happens. So they're like, just focus on this and this and then you'll be fine in this playthrough and then you can go back and do stuff later. And then once you know more stuff, they'll give you other tips. I really hate when you do something extremely cool and you don't get a trophy oh yeah. me too and especially now because the ps4 takes a picture yeah you get right. a trophy and so i want i want the game to capture the moment yeah you're like i just did that awesome thing and that felt like it should have been a trophy i don't know maybe <laughs> I, who do i talk to about that but so uh, the achievement system blows up on the 360 
slowly now we're sort of seeing gamification in schools and in and, and the workplace, everyday life. There's a hash there too. Xbox One's media achievements. Yeah, those, I don't have an Xbox One and I might not. If mm-hmm. I don't get it, it'll be the first my Xbox console I haven't owned. Mandy, I don't think anybody has an Xbox One. <laughs> That's probably true. <laughs> but uh, they have media achievements. Mm-hmm. So now, what is that? I don't know what that is. So, for example, if you are watching episodes of a show on Hulu, you'll get an achievement for, like, watch four episodes on Hulu or, like, use the YouTube app and watch a video. And it's like, the fuck? I I don't get it. And I guess it used to be combined with your gamer score and people got mad and so they made it separate. Mm -hmm. Like, listen, motherfucker, we both know I just spent the past nine hours watching Doctor Who. Don't try to make me feel better about that. I mean, if anything, I don't want to be reminded. Minded. You're right. Like, like oh, a, I, wa- I watched six episodes of that. We, really? We, we, yeah, know, we, we both know that I'm only doing this in my pajamas with a carton of ice cream. Let's yeah. not remind me. I it's mean, like, half insane. the time I watch stuff, it's because I'm tired and want to be lazy. And so I'm half asleep watching cartoons or something. And I don't I don't want to get an achievement for that. It's yeah. just going to make me feel bad about my life choices. You're right. Although it is kind of brilliant to say, you know, you're not gaming right now. But, hey, you can get these achievements if you stay with the X. Xbox and watch your yeah, Downton was... Abbey. Uh, which, which, <laughs> which proceeds to make me feel like even more of a media lady of the night. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, yes, I will stay with you as long as you want, as long as you're doling out those sweet, sweet achievements. Uh-huh. Just but, leave them on the nightstand. <laughs> but no, you're, you are right about the gamification thing, and that has... I hate the word gamification. I think <laughs> yeah. it's terrible, but yeah. it makes sense in the context because it's it's um, giving you badges and things for, for just doing things in mm-hmm. life. And mm-hmm. I know there's like environmental causes where you can earn badges and stuff on a website or like, I think in the like workout scene, that's really becoming a thing mm-hmm. to like, I can see that yeah, that being makes motivating sense. for me. Mm-hmm. Well, you can level up on a porn site these days. So <laughs> yeah, which <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I'm going to stop because I'm already filling like my head's full of different achievements you can get on a porn site <laughs> and nobody wants to hear any of them. Yeah. <laughs> We've already everywhere. embarrassed Mandy so many times. I mean, you can get like There's only one thing you're trying to achieve. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> Oh, well, you know, you get an achievement for different levels of erection. Yeah. <laughs> you know, semi-hard, mostly yeah. hard, rock hard. <laughs> diamond. Yeah, right, you, diamond. You get the zero points for failure to perform. And yeah, then, right. Uh, you know, you get your achievement, your BDSM achievement. <laughs> you know, your dear God, my soul is burning achievement. Mm-hmm. Well, That's for the really weird stuff. Even like Domino's has like some weird pizza achievement oh uh, see that that's another making me feel bad about my life too. yeah right. it's like listen if I'm, I'm working towards something i want achievements yeah. if i'm being lazy and not doing anything achievements are only going to make me feel bad about myself and yeah. i guess for some people maybe playing video games all night makes them feel bad about myself bad about themselves mm-hmm. but not me mm-hmm. that's my hobby i do when i'm less yeah. tired and have some energy at night. No, believe me, when I order from Domino's, I mean, that's like the but last that's... ditch effort to put food in my body. Yeah, yeah no, that's what, wanna... we're, we're at the bottom of the barrel at this point. I yeah. mean... Don't post that to Facebook, okay? <laughs> Speaking of which, porn sites also have like buttons now. Yeah. <laughs> I never understood that. Who, sure. who's, watch, who's watching porn and going, you know who would want to see this? My Facebook friends. You know who I want to know that I'm doing this? You're right. My family. (laughs) Yeah. I feel like they did it so people would hit it accidentally. (laughs) Be really embarrassed about it later Mm -hmm. on. Uh, Josh and I saw an article from a porn site that took its data and found that a significant number of its users searched for Minecraft on, on the, the porn, porn site. site. Wow. And then so they yeah, were showing the things that people who search for Minecraft search for and stuff like that. And I guess like people post actual Minecraft tutorial videos on, on the porn sites. sites. Yeah. It is amazing what you can find posted on some of these porn sites. Yeah, I found, it's crazy. I found the entirety of the Prince of Egypt on xvideos.com, which I proceeded to watch immediately because I'm like, Prince of Egypt is on my porn site. I just, I have to watch this now. It's a very well animated movie. It's a fantastic movie. I just yeah. don't understand why it was on a porn site. But, uh, and no, and like, and then 
I was like, well, is there Minecraft porn? And I didn't want to look for it. And then thankfully somebody in the comments found a picture and it was the most innocent thing mm -hmm. I have seen. It is completely G-rated and it was Minecraft characters having sex. But You can see a little it was nipple. Like set, it was putting two Lego characters on top of each other is yeah. what it looked like because it's Minecraft. That yeah. nipple shit was round. It, it should have been it square. Made me feel better about, made me feel better about life that, that just to means... see how innocent Minecraft porn was. No, that was, that was just the innocent... The porn you saw. Trust me, there's some freaky Minecraft no, shit out there. I don't want to know about that. <laughs> yeah, I don't either. It's not reading reposted articles about Pornhub's data is about as close as I will go <laughs> yeah. to any of that. I don't want any mine shaft. <laughs> <laughs> You have two platinum trophies in Minecraft, don't you? I do. Yeah, I um, they added achievements internally inside of Minecraft, the mm -hmm. PC version originally, and I got all of those. And then when Minecraft came to the 360, I got every achievement. And then when it came to the PS3, I got every trophy and platinumed it. Mm -hmm. And then when it came to the PS4, I got every trophy again and platinumed what it. What was really funny about the PS4 version is we loaded our old world. And mm -hmm. so we went to go do some stuff and stuff left over from our old world had already happened. So we were just automatically getting a bunch of trophies in short <laughs> succession. Like you're supposed to you know go fight the ender dragon but we'd already beaten the ender dragon in our ps3 file and so we were automatically getting trophies pertaining to that oh wow we had to go to the end where the ender dragon was dead and then go through the portal because the trophy triggers when you go through the portal that opens after you beat the ender dragon and so we didn't have to beat the ender dragon a second time we just mm -hmm. went through that portal and mm -hmm. then got the trophy again you see any negative blowback from trophies or achievements i mean i've seen a lot of criticism about multiplayer trophies trophies and I don't mm -hmm. really like to play multiplayer games. Those are traditionally the, most of the trophies that I never get. You know, players do stupid things instead of playing the game because they're trying to get trophies. Mm -hmm. And I can see how that would be a problem, but I can't really speak to that because they're not trophies I try to get. I could see if it was like get a trophy for let's say in Call of Duty, like jumping off 300 cliffs and killing yourself. And so you would like log into Call of Duty and try to get a competitive match going and all of a sudden Some like guys. everyone's just <laughs> jumping off the edge. Yeah. Or, you know, having trophies for doing annoying things to your teammates and, and things like that, which I think was a problem in the early days of, of trophies, but mm -hmm. I think they've sort of figured that out now. Which you think they would have known that going in. Like, oh, let's, let, you know, this trophy where you have to do this really obnoxious thing to your teammates. Surely nobody will abuse that idea, right? I think there's something to be said about usually it's lousy, cheap games that have just incredibly easy achievements or trophies that, you know, people who are actual trophy whores uh, just flock to. Literal trophy whores. Literal trophy <laughs> whores. Um, are they getting paid to get the trophies? I mean, One way maybe. Or another. Maybe that's how they get their allowance. Could be, but I mean, I think it's just sort of, you know, having these lousy games, uh, it's like trophy bait or something, kind of seems like just a nefarious business practice to me. I mean, I don't know that those games were necessarily created for the, that purpose. I would say the most famous game people just played for the trophies is the Hannah Montana, the movie game mm -hmm. for PS3. And, you know, that was made for fans of Hannah Montana. Yeah, but I... you could get that game at Redbox. You could platinum it in like mm -hmm. an hour. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people went and got it just because they wanted the platinum because you didn't have to pay for it except the rental fee. Mm -hmm. And you could platinum it really really quickly yeah. but that's not why they made the game it's no i'm not saying that's why they make them but it's incentive for more people to play these therefore pay for these games in one way or another um just to get their easy trophy or achievement i mean who can say for certain how much of what factors into anything mm -hmm. but it seems logical that there's probably some of that going on. Mm -hmm. I think certainly achievements have helped dissuade people from piracy and that you can't go on Steam and get your achievements if you're pirating a game. Mm -hmm. And so if that's at all important to you, it's an extra incentive to pay for the game instead of steal it. That's true. You know, I'm, I'm certain that there's some executive going, hey, add some achievements to that game. People like achievements. I don't think there's like some kind of snidely whiplash mustache twirling. Yeah, if we make this really shitty game but add achievements, they'll buy it anyways. Well, Unless there is. Mm -hmm. I mean, that, that, I'm sure that's happened at least once, mm -hmm. but... 
mean, Sony and Microsoft require achievements or trophies mm -hmm. for their... Do you think that should be a requirement? I mean, yes and no. I mean, if you want to I don't necessarily game... want developers to be forced mm -hmm. to add trophies against their will. Mm -hmm. But I also like knowing that when I buy a game, it has trophy support. Would The Last of Us have been a worse game if it had no trophies in it? No. I mean... I mean Wait, The I Last of Us had trophies? Yes. Mm -hmm. I apparently missed that through the entire game that Josh and I played. Mm -hmm. That's because I had already played through it, so yeah. I had already gotten all the... Oh, well, that would that would be why. All the story trophies, and we didn't do anything Super to cool. get any. Yeah. They're like, the, the non-story trophies in that game are actually really hard to get. Yeah. I wouldn't say that, that not having trophies makes a game worse, but mm -hmm. certainly I can have more fun with a game if it has trophies. It's just an extra set of goals for me to go through. If I don't like a game or if I don't like the trophies, I ignore it. But there's certain types of trophies that I get really into, mostly collectible trophies, because mm -hmm. I've also always really liked going for collectibles. And so I'll look over the trophies and sort of figure out before I start to the game whether I'm going to bother with them or not. As used to them as we are, the dings and the achievement sort of icon in the corner, do you think you would notice if you were playing a game and it didn't have trophies? Oh, absolutely. I was actually recently playing Transformers Devastation, and I played it for probably two or three hours. I'm like, I haven't gotten a single trophy. What's going on? And I looked at the trophy list, and you probably have to play it at least 12 hours to get a trophy. Because hmm. of the way it's set up, you can't really get trophies until you've beaten the game. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> it's designed to be beaten multiple times with multiple characters, mm -hmm. but yeah, no, I absolutely noticed. See, I, I don't. I um I bought this game, Darkest Dungeons, which yeah. I bought in early access. It's recently come out officially. They they in the official release they added the achievements. In the early access they did not have those. While I'm going, hey, they have achievements nifty, whatever. Like I, I was enjoying the game just fine without the achievements. Yeah. It didn't bother me that they didn't like have them. Mm -hmm. So the fact that they have them now, like it doesn't change anything for mm -hmm. me. If I like the game, I'm gonna like the game and having the achievements is just like, okay, cool, whatever. Yeah, I think I'm the same way. Well, my understanding of the way it happened in Minecraft, I mean I played hundreds of hours of Minecraft before they added achievements. So much of the early criticism when it was still in beta was like, there's no goal, there's nothing to do, like, there's no story, there's no, you know, players just jump in and what are you supposed to do? And that was a huge turnoff for a lot of, you know, more traditional gamer types. I think they ended up adding that as like, okay, for those people who just need a goal you know now we've got goals for them mm -hmm. and i think that did help out a lot for those types of players to enjoy the game more a lot of a lot of the trophies too were or the achievements were designed around teaching you how to play minecraft didn't have a tutorial when it was in beta but this was a natural way to help people through the game was like make one iron ingot and and so people would be like oh wait i can make iron and like have this this goal in front of them and that helped helped certain player types uh learn the mechanics mm -hmm. instead of having to like go online and watch videos and, mm -hmm. and stuff which which is how i learned to play minecraft is you know watching let's plays and things yeah now i don't know uh, i'm assuming that you know with like sort of the uh, recent backwards compatibility for the Xbox One console and the PS2 games on PS4, that if those had originally had uh, achievements or trophies, they'll carry over. You can unlock them again. The 360 backward compatible games just are they're still part of that same trophy or achievement ecosystem. Mm -hmm. You know, PS2 is before right. the trophy system, and so. They when they upscaled the resolution, they also added trophies to mm -hmm. those. Is that games. something you'd like to see more of? Oh, absolutely! I get <laughs> I get so excited just at the potential of games they could bring over uh -huh. and how much fun it would be to try to get trophies in them. Uh, I recently bought the PS4 version of Dark Cloud Two, mm -hmm. which is a great game and it's such a good a lot game of buzz. for trophies because there's lots of optional like building and construction stuff, and so with the right sort of trophy system, I can be really motivated to try a lot of things I might not experiment with otherwise. Or Valkyria 
Chronicles, mm-hmm. uh, which was a PS3 game, but it was released so early in the PS3's lifespan that the console didn't have trophy support yet, and it was never patched in. There's a remastered version of it, and they have a, a trophy system that's set up like getting. It's a military game mm-hmm. set in a fictional version of World War One, and you get like medals of honor for great performance in battles, and like they gave names for all the metal types and everything, and like it's such a lovingly crafted trophy system and I cannot wait to play it again and earn those trophies and it seems like they went out of their way to really make it feel like a part of the game Mm -hmm. that you did such a great job in this battle that you know the military decided to give you special commemoration (laughs) I'm going to get so into that I'm so excited about it I I do think that's worthwhile if they're bringing in an older game Mm -hmm. into the newer console because you know one it gives people who already played the game something new it encourages to explore parts that they're like well you know i did it the first time around didn't like it that much oh but there's a trophy now so mm-hmm. yeah, we'll see what happens mm-hmm. uh so like I, th- I i legitimately think that's worthwhile to go out of your way for mm-hmm. well so, like shadow of the Colossus uh hd had a bunch of trophies for doing some of the post-game stuff when I beat it the first time, I was like, oh, that was that was great. You know, I'll probably play it again at some point, but I'm going to put it on the shelf. Uh, eventually, I went back to it and started trying to get the more difficult, like, post-game trophies mm-hmm. and realized, like, there's so much more depth in that game than, than I even realized my first time through. And I would have never gone and done all the time trial stuff had there not been trophies for it. But I started playing around with that stuff, and it's so cool. Mm. A lot of my favorite trophy implementation has been, you know, let's encourage players to try out some of this other stuff that they might not see. You know, let's let's encourage players to explore these far ends of the map where we've hidden cool Easter eggs. Or mm-hmm. like, you know, like Portal 2 had trophies for finding most of the Easter eggs in the game. And so because there were trophies for it, I actually um, went back and did find a bunch of the cool Easter eggs. And, you know, there's a hidden song and there's like hidden rooms and things like that. And, and, it was, and a lot of the really interesting background plot of the, of the portal setting is in those Easter eggs. Mm which a lot of people probably wouldn't have interacted with otherwise. There's like some uh, like writing on the walls and stuff in the secret rooms. Mm-hmm. And, uh, the National actually wrote and recorded a song for Portal 2. The only way to hear it is to find a secret room where it's playing. Mm-hmm. You know, I like the National and it was really cool to like, you know, end up in this room and find this hidden song. Mm-hmm. Now, aside from the incredibly descriptive name, what is the Retro Achievement Emulator? Uh, the Retro Achievement Emulator is an emulator that adds trophy support to all kinds of retro games. Uh, people create their own trophy or achievement list and then they submit it for approval. And if it's approved, it's added to the game. And so you can play a game like Final Fantasy VI or as Final Fantasy Fantasy Mm -hmm. III. The title it came out originally Mm. in the U.S. and then play it with achievements. And like, you know, they have all sorts of Coliseum achievements. So stuff you don't have to necessarily do to beat the game or like get the maximum amount of ghosts in your party. Complete the opera without ever checking the script. Mm. Tell tell me they give you an achievement for painting Gao on the belt. (laughs) Oh, I don't. I don't remember. So you can, so if you really like achievements, but you also really want to replay those games, any game that people have submitted a list for and got it approved, you can play. And I mean, it's harder with more obscure games, but like Kokoran, which I've talked about a lot on the podcast, does have achievements in the Retro Achievement Simulator. So oh, cool. even some lesser known stuff, you can mm-hmm. enjoy playing it with achievements. I have to check that out. What are some of the crazier or just most ridiculous things some of you guys have done for achievements? Lollipop Chainsaw has an achievement for looking up the girl's skirt. <laughs> and I knew about it before before the game came out. And I think it was a thing that was supposed to be like, you know, you could see if your friends had like tried to look up your, her skirt. But I knew that it was an achievement or it was a trophy. And so I just wanted to get as many trophies as I could. Uh-huh. And so I, did, I got it right away. But you have to like actually, you know, hold the camera camera down under her skirt for like 10 seconds or something like really long Mm -hmm. like you you have to either intentionally be trying to get the trophy or intentionally be trying to look up her skirt in order to see that trophy dang Mm -hmm. and i thought that was really clever (laughs) it is 
stuff like that is more fun. Uh, in Disgaea 3, there's a trophy that you can only get if you keep bothering a statue throughout the game. And if you bother it enough times, the statue will come to life, tell you to go away and throw gum at your hair. <laughs> and then you get an already chewed gum statue. Uh-huh. So I got that one. But uh, the hardest day I've ever worked for a trophy in the one I'm kind of most embarrassed about that was worth it in the end is a money trophy for Atelier Totary uh, when I was getting the platinum. There's uh, an ending you can only get if you have just an obscene amount of money. And I figured out a trick where you can craft this item and then it's an item that contains a bunch of healing items when you open it and then you can resell it at mm-hmm. a profit. Mm-hmm. And so I crafted stuff and opened it and sold it like probably for hours <laughs> until I got all the money. But when I got that ending i could get the true ending of the game and it was worth it to see the true ending because it was really good and hmm. that was the first game i ever platinumed and hmm. the most embarrassing one i ever <laughs> platinumed because i just literally spent hours crafting and opening an item and doing nothing else and yeah. being bored out of my mind and hating myself <laughs> that's and usually i won't do those mm-hmm. kinds of busy work trophies mm-hmm. but that i couldn't get the true true ending without it and I just didn't even know how to get that much money without some kind of exploit. And that was the best one I could figure out. Mm -hmm. In Lego Lord of the Rings, uh, there's a trophy called One Does Not. And then the description for the trophy is simply walk into Mordor. (laughs) And so, like, in the game, if you walk to Mordor, like, you'll ding that trophy. Hmm. I will will absolutely play games because I like their trophy names. Mm -hmm. Like, Josh and I have talked about this before, but we played Aliens Colonial Marines, Mm -hmm. which is a terrible game. But all the trophies are lines. Not all the trophies, but a lot of the trophies are lines from Aliens. And so it was so much fun to go and get those trophies and mm-hmm. just see the phrase pop up. I've been meaning to play the Telltale Jurassic Park game because Josh told me the trophies had good names. When there's a movie I really like and there's a video game adaptation that's pretty good, uh, one of my favorite things is when the trophies have movie quote names. Yeah. Like, I just love that. And yeah. I don't know why, but it's hmm. it's so good. And, like, Lego Lord of the Rings has a ton of Lord of the Rings quotes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't think I've ever done anything too insane. I've never really been into the trophies, like I said, until just recently. I do really, really hate it. It irks the hell out of me when I just kind of like look at trophies the list at some point and i see one or two that i could have gotten but just was completely oblivious to it so i didn't jump a certain way or didn't shoot that dumb bear in the corner or something you know what i mean like (laughs) shoot the dumb bear you know it's like god damn it i could have got that one but i did get one that i liked um in grand theft auto 4 where you have to ride in a taxi from one island through the next until the third one without skipping ahead uh, I did that one. That was pretty enjoyable. Just a nice leisurely ride. At the bar you hang out at in Catherine, there's a guy who's a big beer snub. And if you sit next to him and listen to all of his boring <laughs> trivia about beer, and this takes like a large chunk of game time because you have to go there multiple times and mm-hmm. talk to him. And if you listen to it, every single piece of boring beer trivia he has, you get a trophy. So with that, I think uh, we've come to the end of another discussion. You have just unlocked an achievement for sitting through it. Feel free to chime in in the uh, comment section and give us some uh, cool achievements slash trophy stories. Uh, I'd be looking forward to that. So, you know, I think achievements, by and large, are pretty cool. Uh, trophies, even cooler. It's kind of a cool way to add a- another level of difficulty or uh, extend the playthrough after, um, you know, the final battle's beaten or whatnot. Some of them are frustrating. The the ones that, you know, are cordoned off by question marks, the mysterious ones I really despise. But uh, I'm looking forward to my first platinum, which, you know, I'll probably never get. Um, but, you know, that's my own battle. And with that, I'd like to thank you guys for joining us. Later. We also uh, have spiders. They're not for sale. They're just... Yeah, we just got them. We got spiders.